Hello and welcome to another video episode of Tripod Talk Radio. Today we have a very special guest and some exciting news to share with you. Dr. John Waterhouse is a veterinarian and certified canine rehab practitioner from Boulder, Colorado. Along with his wife, veterinarian Dr. Celia Waterhouse, they teach veterinary professionals the latest canine rehab methods through online Veterinary Teaching Academy at veterinaryteachingacademy.com. And now they've just launched Canine Rehab On Demand. This program helps pet parents get the information and exercises they need to help their dogs recover from surgery or injury and improve their quality of life. We're especially excited to announce that there are courses available specifically to help front or rear leg tripods, but we're going to let Dr. Waterhouse tell you all about this. Welcome to the show, Dr. Waterhouse. Thank you very much for having me. I'm actually really honored and humbled that you would uh, have me on this show because I know what a great community you have and the how can we say the passion that people have when it comes to tripods and their beloved pets. Oh well thank you. We we do. We're crazy about our three-legged pets. And and I know you are too and you've done a lot of great work with with all animals and, and especially our tripod friends. Can you tell us just a little bit about yourself um, and, and why you decided to do canine rehab on demand? Well, you can probably pick up, I have a funny accent. And so <laughs> I'm Australian by birth and education. And I came out to the United States back in 2010 to do some specialist training in pain management and sports and rege regenerative medicine under the tutelage of a gentleman called Dr. Jamie Gaynor. But it all started back when I was just a fledgling uh, veterinarian and my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, had a beautiful Belgian Malinois called Tova. And I, I laugh and to this day I still say, I had to make Tova love me before Celia would even look at me. Well, Tova developed degenerative myelopathy. And that's one of the most um, the hardest diseases to get a diagnosis of. And I was just saying before you above, I classified DM and then having, and then the diagnosis that your pet potentially will need an amputation is the two hardest things that I as a clinician have to diagnose and talk to my clients about. But really there was nothing 20 plus years ago that we knew about degenerative myelopathy or rehabilitation services. And so that heartache of not knowing my wife and I are both veterinarians not knowing what to do for Toba we said we will never let our clients feel that pain that frustration or the desperation of what to do for their beloved pet and that's what started us down the road of finding out educating and learning more about sports medicine rehabilitation for both our clients and then we found the profession really there wasn't much out there and that started the Veterinary Teaching Academy and the whole training that we've started on multiple years ago and where we are today. So, and, and that is so exciting that it led you to our community at some point. I, I can't even remember how we met, but um, you know, when, when I talked to you about uh, the need for some type of guidance for tripod parents, you were all over it and, and excited about the possibility. Well, it's a, it's, as I said, it's one of the worst diagnoses you will ever get for with your beloved pet. And it's great. We have progressed so much over the last two decades in equipment, technology, laser therapy, regenerative medicine, other modalities are now starting to come to the forefront that we have for our beloved pets and patients. And so this is an area that I'm really passionate about, um, that it's about giving these little guys the best chance at the best quality of life. And we can do so much for them, but it's all about education and getting the information out. Absolutely. And there's still so many of our members who join us that aren't even aware that canine rehab is a thing. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't know. Their vet didn't tell them, or maybe their vet didn't even know. But a lot of people leave the clinic when their animal is released from surgery with no guidance at all on how to help the animal get stronger, how to avoid injury, and, and all of the important things they need to know to, to have a, a healthy, happy, three-legged animal. And while we can provide the emotional support and share our experiences and tell them rehab, 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 um, 
up until now, we've never had the ability to point them directly to a comprehensive program like the one you've created. So we are super excited about this. And, and really, I created this program because of conversation with you guys about what is lacking in the tri-limb community. And really, when I then went into my research, there's really nothing out there, as you said, to help the tri-limb parent deal with once they come home from the hospital, what now? and what to do over the next weeks, months, years with their beloved pet companion and what is the good, the bad and what to expect. And that's what got my thinking cap on about producing a program like this to help people in your community, but all people that have a tripod pet, give them the information, the resources and the knowledge so they can give their pet the best life possible. Well, we can't thank you enough for that because you have a wealth of information at veterinaryteachingacademy.com um, and you've been teaching veterinarians all sorts of clinical, technical information way over our heads. But what you've done with this program is you kind of distilled it down and translated it in layman's terms about how pet parents can help their dogs and, and eventually mm -hmm. cats through these difficult times. And really, we have to thank, and I call it St. Corona or the COVID <laughs> virus, because a lot, we started Canine Rehab On Demand only, um, it launched a couple of months ago. And it was there because I've been working on this for multiple years, but traditionally my training has been to veterinarians and rehab professionals on the canine, on the veterinary teaching academy through the canine uh, rehabilitation teaching academy. But with COVID, a lot of our students lost the ability to do surgery. In Australia and other countries, the government came in, took their respirators, took their anesthetic machines, took their drip sets to put into human hospitals because we were so wow. overloaded. So now all the veterinarians couldn't see their elderly clients that had geriatric patients. What do we do? So I know my pets, my, I have a 100 pound German Shepherd and a pug, and they <laughs> lost condition during the COVID initial quarantine time of lockdown because we couldn't get out and do the daily activities. And I know with geriatric animals, they start to hurt. And so Canine Rehab On Demand was born about giving these programs to my veterinary students so they could refer them to their clients to do rehabilitation at home with their pet and help them through the COVID-19 time. And that's what we birthed and that's what's rolling out. We're rolling out new programs every month and hopefully early next year we'll have, of the top 14 orthopedic problems, we'll have a program that people can do at home with their pet. Fantastic. That is so exciting. Well, um, let's get into the, the program that you developed yeah. for, for tripods. Um, tell me, what can, what can we learn from each of the programs? Like what are um, some of the differences between the two that, that you have and, um, and share a little bit about uh, one of each. Well, okay. you tell us why don't i show some yeah. visual aids okay. i'm so going to log listen. into our canine rehab and you can tell us what we're seeing so the first part of the program is i'm going to call the education portion and that's where you get access or the i wanted to give the general public access to rehab training that i've been giving to veterinarians for the last five years and so in this program you get access to the same uh webinar that I give to veterinarians and to make it easier, oh, here we go. So if we, we click on, we see the video, video icon there. And so this is the same video training that I give to veterinarians. And so this is an hour and a half worth of video. And this is designed to talk from day one when you come home from hospital, what to expect from wound care, wound healing. And then all the way through, and then I give you a time-stamped index, as you can just see here on the screen, because people go, where do I find a certain piece of information in that hour and a half of video? So if you want to learn uh, treatment options, and then you want to learn about urination at home, so you go to, uh, what is it, 22 minutes and 38 seconds, and you learn about, or complications there, 18 minutes and 19 seconds. It gives you a table of content so you can quickly jump through the video to find those specific areas and topics that you might, might need to know now to help you and your beloved tripod uh, companion. And so I've tried to make this fundamentally easy step-by-step -step system to follow 
of education to give you the resources and the knowledge so you're equipped also so you can go and have a great conversation with your veterinarian or hopefully your rehab professional about how your pet's progressing. Other resources, you just saw the key point summary there. We also, I give you access to the audio download. But some people learn differently. Some people like to listen to me while they're driving in the car, um, running on the treadmill at gym, or even better when they're out walking their beloved pet companion. So I've just tried to make it as easy as I can for you to get the information so you can help your pet. And so here we're just on the video showing you at the end, I talk an example through some exercises that could be uh, prescribed by a veterinarian. Because as I said, this was a video produced for veterinarians. And so I then will talk about the rehab program in a little bit. I then expand this, but this was just to give examples to vets of some exercises they could prescribe to their clients uh, for their tri-limb uh, patient and so now we come back to this is we've talked about the education part now I've, it's like two sides of a coin and now we have the actual meat and potatoes this is the 12-week program part and so in this we give you downloadable guides and I break this down into I'm trying to give as many resources as possible so we talk about a rehabilitation modality guide which rehab modalities work and which ones don't work for this specific condition. I then give a 12 week nutraceutical guide and we go through and we talk about once again, which nutraceuticals and pharmaceuticals work, which ones don't. And then a 12 week program with sheets you can print out every week so you can tick off as you give the supplements and pharmaceuticals in over a 12 week period. We also talk about equipment and we also talk about exercise guidelines as well. So then as we click on the exercise program, this is really where the, the beauty of the program is. And I've created two week modules. So every two week, a new module opens up. And so as the new module opens up, that's introducing new exercises that work on the previous two week module. So as they're building strength, range of motion, movement, we're then introducing ever harder or more um, cardiovascular exercises or more range of motion exercises or coordination exercises to help them build and get back to doing the things that they love to do before they had whatever accident or um, conditional medical condition that caused them to have a limb uh, spare or a limb amputation surgery. Uh, what else would you like to know about this? So um, we also have a store and in the store that works with the equipment checklist and is designed. So we talk about harnesses, mm -hmm. but a lot of people talk about harness, but not where to go get harnesses. So in the store, we have links directly to the harness manufacturers fulfillment pages. So you can learn more about the harness or a cart. So we have Eddie's wheels, dog on wheels, and they're my two carts, my preferred carts, if you need a cart and you can go to the site and learn more about that piece of equipment and then order direct from those companies. And so they're companies that I've dealt with for the last decade and I know that their products work. I know that they have the heart in there and they're doing it for the right reasons and that's why I have them in my store. So hopefully that's a quick overview it of is. What, it, what the program is and also there's a front limb program and a hind limb program. And so I've split them into two programs because um, hopefully, God hope, you'll never need to have a front limb and a hind limb amputation, but it just, mm -hmm. they need different things. And there's different, um, like a front limb amputation, they're putting more weight on that front limb. So we need to protect the elbow. We need to protect the shoulder. So there are exercises there to help build up that shoulder, that neck region and help support them transition because they put 60% of their weight on the front limb, it's a lot harder for a forelimb amputation to get up and moving and get used to hopping and using that front limb compared to a hind limb amputation patient that really, as we make the joke, that God, when he created canines, 
I actually gave them three limbs and threw in a fourth for a spare. They do so much better with a hind limb amputation than a four limb amputation, especially with our larger breed dogs. And you so know, you, little subtlety differences. You mm -hmm. mentioned equipment, and that may sound daunting to some people. They might mm -hmm. not be aware of the, what type of equipment there is. Could you kind of give a broad overview of the different stages of equipment and what people may be able to do if they're not able to invest in equipment? So in through the program, on especially the exercise program, also on the equipment checklist, I will recommend pieces of equipment that are designed to help improve your pet's quality of life and your quality of life from harnesses with handles to help save your back, especially if you have a, a large breed dog like Wyatt. Well, Wyatt was like 100 pounds and you know, lifting Wyatt up and down stairs, helping him to walk can be taxing on us as the owners or the clinicians as well as the pet. And so I talk about recommended piece of equipment, but if you don't want to purchase pieces of equipment, I talk about household items you can use, like a towel for a belly band support, um, using cushions off your sofa instead of wobble boards. So I try and make it as easy and as friendly, and really I should say I flip it. I talk about all household equipment mainly, and I talk about then pieces of equipment you can supplement in to make your life easier. But still I talk about mainly because most people aren't going to go out and buy pieces of equipment. Um, they're gonna use what they have around the house. So I talk about that first and then I talk about the recommended pieces of equipment second. Yeah, so I was referring specifically to like canine conditioning gear. Um, like I noticed you have a ball behind you. That's gonna be an advanced treatment tool for a dog doing those sort of things. Uh, but can you talk about the, the stages of equipment like from a balanced pad to a balanced disc to a bone to a ball and when they might come in handy? Well, we know when, they, when your, your pet first comes home that really the number one thing we need to work on is getting them up standing, getting them weight shifting, getting them normal standing. So we don't introduce any equipment probably till week um, six or seven. Um, all about, it's about getting them standing, getting them weight shifting side to side, getting them comfortable with walking. And so that is the whole, the first few weeks, it's all about getting them comfortable walking. Because if we can get them walking early, then we're ahead of the game and everything's really, I wouldn't say easy, but it's those patients that, especially the four limb amputation, they've got to learn to step and they've got to learn to step. And that's the hardest training. So most of the program at the beginning is about getting them standing, getting used to standing, supporting them, and then getting them to walk. Um, then we introduce the equipment and then we start low and we always work higher and higher because First exercise is lifting a paw, you lift it an inch off the ground because you can quickly put it down. You can help them. It's all about supporting and they're ever slowly increasing height, difficulty, strenuous time out as we go through the program. So hopefully answering your question, it's all about micro stages, working their way up a ladder, not just saying, here we have the exercise ball. Day one, we're gonna throw Don't them on the on exercise ball. <laughs> it's gonna be great, they've got a balance and no, it's about doing it safely, doing it in small, I call it baby steps. And we're baby, the whole program's about baby steps. Things that you can't really hurt your beloved pet doing, mm -hmm. they're designed to do outside the clinic environment. So inside the clinic, your rehab profession, we're talking about adjustments, things like that. This is very basic, very easy Good. things for you can, to do in the home environment. And that's where your course comes in so handy, teaching people the basics that they can do at home, especially at a time when they can't get in there in the clinic with their dog when they go get um, Yeah, I, I just had a member who said she lives in a very remote part of Australia and said, you know, I, I don't have access to canine rehab. And I'm like, yes, you do. Now you do. <laughs> um, so uh, how do I, have you built in um, uh, procedures for pet parents to know when they're doing these exercises incorrectly? Because that's my, my biggest worry is like, how do I know if I'm hurting my dog or not? So I've tried to build in and most every of the exercises has a video with it showing how to do that exercise safely and then written instructions with photos. And if there isn't a video, there's detailed written instructions, how, where to place the hand, 
what to feel for uh, inflection extension, what end of range should feel like. If any time, and I talk about signs in every exercise, signs to watch for if your pet is in distress. So if they look at you, if they whine, if they lick their lips, if they growl, if they mouth it, they're mm. really good education things to watch to make sure that you're not pushing past that safety or the protocol for your pet because your pet will let you know. And I learned this when I was dealing with uh, the Colorado Springs canine unit because they're not taught any etiquette or language. So they have wagging tail bite, wagging tail bite. So you have to really be good at picking up those little cues like he looks at you. Okay, that's him trying to say, I don't want to bite you, but that's the only tool I have in my toolbox of communication. And so in this, I try and educate about, yes, about things to watch all the way through the program. So in the beginning, there are education videos that just talk about how to do cryotherapy, how to do massage, mm -hmm. how to educate you. If at all you feel uncomfortable, don't do it. Talk to your veterinarian, talk to your rehab. This is supposed to be done in conjunction with your veterinarian or rehab professional. Or by yourself, if you are out the back of Burke in Australia, she'll understand that saying, um, where you don't have access then you can do this on your own. Yeah, and I've reviewed these courses and I am so impressed. I mean, the level of detail, like you said, it's it's incredible. Um, now, I have to ask for, I know it's called Canine Rehab On Demand, but what about the cats? So the cats. <laughs> we, have, we, we have a lot of cat members. And I apologize for that because um, I'm going to be doing a program for cats. So next year I'm devoting pretty much the whole year to now produce these programs for our feline partners. Yay. So I'm going to next year, actually it's service working dogs. So that's another thing. So I'm working on programs for military police, avalanche rescue, seeing oh, eye dogs. And that's coming out the first few months of next year. And then the rest of the year, I'm going to dedicate to our feline companions and build a whole not canine rehab on demand, but a feline rehab on demand platform and produce courses because there's nothing out there for our feline That's companions. True. Absolutely and, nothing. And Murphy's Law, my cat actually walked in front of me and then went out just before we started recording. And she's a glorious 17 year old matriarch. Oh. And so, Everything I do is for our pets and our animals. And so, yes, next year, the whole year is designed towards service animals and our feline companions. So we will be coming out, but a lot of the principles are the same to get you the exercise a little different because trying to get your feline companion, but they do so well um, when they're trialing. For some reason, cats mm -hmm. just get it they get up and they're jumping and springing and doing everything a day after surgery. And you're like, no, no, don't let it out of the room. You know what I mean? They are so good. They just naturally get it. It's our canine companions that have a little bit more trouble getting used to the idea of being a trilemma. But yes, there will be pro, but for the people who have felines at the moment, a lot of what we talk about are both and I have examples in there as well I think with the nutraceuticals and that through the webinar series or cat feline versions of those products but they can also email me and okay support at veterinaryteachingacademy.com and they can ask those questions and we will then create um, or through you do blogs and things like that with the most asked question but yes Things are coming for our feline companions. Yeah, Don't fantastic. feel that you're a second class citizen is in felines aren't important. They're more important, but we have to generate that because <laughs> there's nothing out there. And I was, yeah. it was easy for me to turn the canine information around, but yes, I'm working on the feline programs. That is so great to hear. It's wonderful. And, and with that, I think we've... We can't um, wait to get much, the word out yeah, about this we, and telling people how to get into the Veterinary Teaching Academy and accessing the Trilim courses, as well as these other conditions that you do address. Yeah. Um, in the show notes, we'll have links for all of that. We'll have links, pricing, and all that good stuff in the show notes. And um, Can't thank you enough for yeah, your time, Dr. Thank Water you, Dr. Waterhouse. You're welcome. And thank you for everything you guys do, because it's through people like you getting out there helping people 
understand and through education that we're really going to change the world. And I say it's the chicken and egg. We need to, I'm educating the profession, but we need people out there to give the resources to the general public so they know the questions to ask, where to look. Because before, and I love internet, because really, if you think a decade ago, we only had a book on the library shelf and that was as much as, and you had to know where to find that. Now we have the internet and what you guys are doing really is changing the world. So I want to say thank you for everything you do because it's people like you that really, we can change the world together. Yes, together we, we can. can do it. That means so thank much to you us. So thank much. you so That's much. That's an for your honor. Time. Have a great day. You too. Thanks. Many thanks to Dr. Waterhouse for creating these programs you can do at home to help keep your tripods fit and strong. Check the show notes for direct links to the recovery overview and training programs specifically designed for front and rear leg tripods. Learn more about keeping your tripod healthy at tripods.com.